Bitcoin has pumped up 10% on fake news, fake ETF news. An approval of a BlackRock ETF is fake news, and yet Bitcoin still pumped up 10%. I'm going to give a little bit more explanation as to why that happened, what what you should do uh, looking in the future as eventually this will not be fake news. It will be real news. But for those that are not aware, this is Bitcoin's price chart over the last few days here. We can see that it was chopping along steadily, 26.8K, uh, 26.7, you know, 26, 20,000, uh, $27,000 uh, dollar range. You know, very little change over the last few days here, moving barely half a percent one way or the other. And then this morning, it decided to move up uh, 10%, 10% if you include the wick there, um, from just under 27,000 all the way up to 30,000 uh, earlier um, today and now it's already back down to 28,000 US dollars. Now, in the long term, price action in US dollars for Bitcoin does not matter. However, this is a very sudden move, as you can obviously see. And why is this? Why did this happen? Well, like I said, uh, this was because of a fake tweet put out by Coin Telegraph. Coin Telegraph is a news um, organization for Bitcoin, Ethereum, other. Uh, blockchains and everything. And so, of course, they had this fake news. They have 1.9 million uh, followers on Twitter, so they're a pretty large account. And so someone there posted this tweet earlier uh, today where they all they had to say was breaking. SEC approves iShares Bitcoin spot ETF, which is uh, which this is uh, BlackRock uh, reportedly. <laughs> and all it took was that for others to uh, re for others to retweet that or repost that to comment more on it. I heard rumors that it was even on Bloomberg Terminal for <laughs> a little while, and so this fake news really uh, caught fire quickly, and as a result, um, had Bitcoin prices spike up a lot. Now, I'm actually very happy about that because this took out a lot of uh, leverage, a lot of speculation um, on Bitcoin's price, a lot of leverage traders were long. And so, first, the important thing. The important lesson from this video is number one, to understand the fiat price does not matter for Bitcoin. But the number two is do not trade this. <laughs> if you're trying to trade this and you're trying to predict Bitcoin's volatility, you're trying to make money to the upside or to the downside or to hedge your bets or whatever the case, uh, you are going to almost certainly um, get burnt. I know a lot of traders, experienced traders, and they say that they will trade anything besides Bitcoin. And this chart, again, is precisely why. Literally nothing could be happening. We can be having this crab market, this boring sideways market, and then all of a sudden, within a few hours here, you get this massive skyrocketing up and then this massive downwards action. You know, if you're trying to go long Bitcoin, or excuse me, trying to go short Bitcoin here, you were wiped out. And then likewise, if you're trying to go long Bitcoin or any time in here, thinking that this ETF news was legitimate, uh, then you get uh, destroyed to the downside. So please, <laughs> please, whatever you do, do not trade Bitcoin. Have a long time horizon. Don't trade it on especially shorter time frames. Just don't, just avoid your itch to trade at all costs. The volatility is very enticing, but please don't do it. I know a lot of people that have tried and the stories are um, very depressing of people losing large amounts of money, especially when you understand Bitcoin. It is so painful to lose money that otherwise you could have had uh, just buying sats. Now, Here's something to keep in mind. This is a tweet I made a little bit earlier today. People are uh, really liking it. But anyway, I, I joked that people thought uh, this was a real pump. You know, this is just a 10% move, okay? When the real ETF comes, when the real large money allocations come, okay, when that comes, we will not be looking at a 10% pump, okay? Look at the speed at which this happened, okay? The speed is remarkable, okay? You had this common belief, this fake common belief that we had this ETF approval and immediately Bitcoin just started having these massive green candles upwards. And people thought, oh my goodness, this is really big, you know, 5% candles, 8% candles or whatever. And my encouragement is that wait until the ETF news is real. Wait until this is not speculation from some intern at Cointelegraph. Wait until this is Larry Fink announcing it. Wait until this is uh, real people talking about this out there. It's real news, okay? Bitcoin's green candles will not be mere 5%, 8% candles, okay? We could be looking at very, very massive green candles upwards, okay? And to be clear, this is not some statement me saying, oh, look, this is the great big green, green candle we're waiting on. Now it's time to cash out, okay? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that Bitcoin will experience numerous events, perhaps dozens of events over the coming 10 years or so, where there's a before price and an after price, okay? The ETF approvals is one of them, you know, one by one. Um, another one it'll be governments getting in, in, into Bitcoin in the same way that El Salvador has. Other countries would probably do the same. 
you know, over the next decade or so, Bitcoin is going to probably be very boring, very monotonous, very tedious for long periods of time until suddenly overnight, just like this, except it'll be real, uh, there will be massive uh, price swings to the upside. Another example I can think of uh, is Bitcoin in terms of the Argentine uh, peso. We look at back a ways, you know, this is what's happening in Argentina right now. You know, Argentina has been making news. It's the same thing here. We see Bitcoin. Oh, it looks relatively similar. But as the currency becomes unhinged, it's like you can't trade this. You can't time this. You have to just go along for the ride. If we zoom in here to some of these major pumps, you know, these are major 18% pumps. So that's an 18% one up in Argentine pesos. So that's a 30% um, skyrocket there. Uh, this one was a 43, almost 45%. Um, skyrocketing in price there. Okay, my point is that if you are going to be pricing Bitcoin in terms of a currency that is at a faster and faster pace, um, declining in value, you can't be trading this. And so my encouragement, when you're thinking about what should I learn from today's pump, again, like I said, don't think in terms of fiat price, think of fiat in terms of Bitcoin. Number two, don't trade this. And number three, realize that these kinds of charts you better be getting used to, and they're going to be more massive, okay? This is nothing. This is nothing on the long time horizon, okay? And obviously, since it was retraced, it's literally nothing. <laughs> but even if it wasn't retraced, this would be uh, nothing. So it's important to keep those things in mind. Now, again, like I said, this is not as a statement of saying, oh, we're waiting for the massive green candle, and that's when you'll sell. Okay, this is a comment I had from a YouTube on a YouTube video yesterday, okay, this this uh, Kevin guy asked, if Bitcoin is better than U.S. currency, then why do you want my U.S. dollars in exchange for your Bitcoin? And I said that I don't. <laughs> and I posted this um, about how um, few people understand that Bitcoiners actually don't want fiat currency. We don't want it when Bitcoin is 100,000 U.S. dollars. We don't want it when it's a million or 10 million U.S. dollars or even more than that. And we're not waiting for a day to sell to them. And people are going to freak out when they realize that. You know, a lot of <laughs> there's Oliver. Oh, here, here's an example. Oliver is a trader. Oliver is a professional trader. He's He's been in Wall Street for decades here. And he says he will never trade Bitcoin. And like many other traders I know, they're actually good. <laughs> they say, I will not uh, sell, my, sell my Bitcoin. So these, these are funny. Oh, yeah, this is the common meme. Um, let's see. If this is the exact meme here. Sorry, I want. I didn't know. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? I can trade my Bitcoin for millions someday. No, Neo. I'm trying to tell you that when you're ready, you don't have to. <laughs> uh, oh, that's funny. <laughs> the second part of the meme is not part of the regular meme. That's funny. Anyway, um, yeah, point is that few people understand. They, they think that there's going to be these massive green candles for Bitcoin. And that in that moment, we'll sell Bitcoin to them and they'll be able to get it for a higher price. And my encouragement to you is to consider the possibility that maybe these Bitcoiners are crazy. Michael Saylor is crazy. Okay. Max Kaiser is crazy. Okay. Greg Foss and James Lavish and Larry Lepard, you know, these people are all crazy. Preston Pish, he's crazy. Okay. Jeff Booth is crazy. I'm crazy. Natalie Brunel is crazy. Uh, Stacey Herbert is crazy. You know, all these Bitcoiners, Kent, Kent Long, you know, Lynn Eldon, all these Bitcoiners out there, they're talking about Bitcoin explaining their allocations of why they're convinced on Bitcoin. You know, none of them are really selling for any fiat price. Yeah, maybe they'll sell a little bit here and there. But my suspicion is that as Bitcoin grows and grows and grows, and we all collectively realize there's a higher and higher percentage probability that we are correct, we're going to have a lower and lower desire to sell Bitcoin. Because yeah, Bitcoin might be worth 100 times in the future what it is today. However, if we think there's a 10x probability that we're correct, and the Bitcoin is just going to keep going up forever, Laura, then why, why would we sell then? I mean, I don't know why I would. Like, at what point does it make sense for me to sell my tickets to the lifeboat and get back on the ship? And so, anyway, like this YouTuber's commenting here, I don't say this in a mocking way. I just say it in reality, hopefully, to get people to start thinking about it. But it's that if you think that we're going to sell Bitcoin for political for your political currency units, I mean, I really don't want to do that. And that's just today when Bitcoin is in this, um, whoops, and this is why, this chart is why, this Argentina peso example is why. Why would you ever sell uh, dollars for pesos again? Why would you ever sell Bitcoin for pesos again? Like, it's just going to keep going up indefinitely. No matter what time horizon you look at, whether you're looking at one year, you're looking at one month, you're looking at five year, or you're looking at even longer, there's just no point at which that occurs. And you can say that, oh, that's not going to happen to the US dollar. And you'd be right on a certain time horizon, but eventually the US dollar is going to go in the same trajectory, just like the euro, just like the yen, just like all the pesos and, and liras in the world. Dollar is going to go in the same trajectory. Okay, it's lost already 99% of its purchasing power in the last year, and it's going to continue to lose purchasing power in the future. So, what is my other encouragement? Okay, we've talked about don't think of Bitcoin and fiat, think of fiat and Bitcoin. Number one, number two, don't trade Bitcoin because of this ridiculous volatility. And number three, we've talked about how. 
we're probably not going to be selling Bitcoin for fiat at any time in the future, or at least the hardcore Bitcoiners like myself. Okay, what's the fourth thing I would encourage you to consider? Well, this would be the fourth thing I encourage you to consider as we wrap up our time here. It'd be this, okay? <clears throat> this will load. Um, about how Bitcoin could easily be a million dollars at 1% global adoption, okay? Current adoption is roughly 1 to 3 million people that are using Bitcoin, own Bitcoin, have self-custody Bitcoin, okay? 1% global adoption is 80 million people, okay? Okay, 1 to 3 million today, you know, depending on who you ask, and depending on what metrics you want to use, okay? 80 million people is 1% global adoption. Not 10%, not 50%, 1% global adoption, okay? And most current adopters, like we have allocations of 50% or less, while in time, most adopters will have allocations above 50%. Again, like I was saying before, if we look at the future and Bitcoin is 100 times more expensive, however, everyone has 10 times the confidence in it and there's significantly less perceived risk and real risk in it as the network just continues to grow, higher and higher allocations will be justified. Higher and higher percentage allocations will be justified by a wide variety of adopters and people holding it. So not only is the number of adopters going to go up, but the percent allocations are probably going to go up as well. And so if, let's say, theoretically, we're right in the middle of 2 million people allocating, which I think perhaps even 2 million is a little optimistic. I think I think it's more on the 1 million side. But let's say if user is only 40x, allocation per user on average doubles, while simultaneously the remaining number of coins have, which is not <laughs> which is not an absurd claim, okay? That, that's, that's, the op, that's the optimistic claim, okay? We have the halving next year. We have another halving with, within four years after that, okay? Simultaneously exchange coins are going down dramatically. It's like, Half, like that's assuming the worst case scenario. In all reality, it's probably going to be significantly less than half, again, because of the ETS, because of everything else, okay? You have a halving plus another halving within five years from the date of this recording. You have two halvings. So that's one fourth the remaining coins of block issuance, number one. Number two, you have the ETFs and major high net worth individuals sucking coins off exchanges like the Michael Saylors of the world. And number three, the exchange rate is already going down. So already to being drained. So <laughs> again, people think that I'm trying to, pick moon math here, but I think I'm being as conservative as I possibly can be, okay? A 40x allocation, okay? Not not an, an 80x allocation, okay? That'd be an 80x allocation if we're looking at 1 million adopters, okay? But if we just take a little bit more reasonable and say a 40x users and allocations to get just to 1%, number one. Number two, they only double their allocation. So they only go from a 10% to a 20% allocation average. They only go from a 20% to a 40% allocation average, you know, whatever it is for them. And Coins only half, <laughs> not not a tenth, not an eighth, only half. And debasement is only 2x, okay? When in reality, we, be, we could be looking at enough money printing, enough debasement to get that Argentine example where we have a 3x or a 4x in debasement, okay? So all four of these numbers independently, I would argue, are realistic, slightly leaning conservative, not optimistic for Bitcoin's price. And my question is, do you really think a million dollars is bullish, okay? You know, take these numbers together. Multiply them by current price, okay? A million dollars. <laughs> People need to adjust your unit bias up. And that's my hope for this video, that you can be adjusting your unit bias up. And so, um, and then someone asked me a little below in, in response to this, um, you know, I talked about how I think this is exciting. You know, these kinds of charts, these kinds of uh, number go up days from Bitcoin, they are fun. They are exciting. But reality is that it's also um, it's also real that many people are not prepared for this. Okay, when we get these dramatic candles upwards, we'll need to have already gotten coins off exchanges and we will need to already prepare our custody and estate plan. So this can load. Yeah, extreme rapid upside means less time to prepare when this begins, okay? If we are not looking at a fake coin telegraph article and we're looking at a real news piece okay if we're not looking at this fake news here where we have um, a, a, a fake <laughs> where we have a fake um, organization talking about fake news okay if we're looking at real organization with real money with real billions of dollars we're not going to be looking at a tiny overnight candle like this we're going to be looking at day after day after day of massive candles okay and if you have not prepared by getting your coins up exchanges before that you've made a really big mistake. If you're not prepared before that date, getting your estate plan in progress, I would argue that's a really big mistake. And so my encouragement here, and again, I'm biased here in promoting this, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I care much less if you use me or not, use us or not. I care much more that you do it. <laughs> uh, it's so important because I know many of you watching this, you still have Bitcoin on exchanges, okay? I talk to hundreds of Bitcoiners, okay? All day, every day, most days, I talk to you guys. I know there's a lot of you watching that still have coins on exchanges or still do not have your custody down, okay? 
I'm talking to you, okay? Get your coins off exchanges, okay? Because these times are coming where these massive periods of rapid upside means less time to prepare when they begin. So if you need help or somebody you know needs help taking custody, setting up a multi-sig vault, or preparing an estate plan, I'm happy to help, okay? Now, and just to give one more series of questions for you, okay? Okay, question number one. Four questions for you. Question number one, what happens to your Bitcoin if you die tonight? Do your family have the knowledge and skills to get and then manage your coins? Number two, what internal risks do you have? Forgetting your own keys, losing your keys, you're losing your memory, misplacing them, a miscommunication with family members, a house fire where you lose your key, you know, whatever. Have you thought about these questions? Okay, internal risks. What about external risks? What about a 6102 attack, meaning a government confiscating your coins or attempting to confiscate your coins? Okay, what about litigation risk? This becomes an increasing risk as your net worth goes up. What about a $5 wrench attack, either on you or your loved ones? What about jurisdictional arbitrage? Again, in case of the 6102 or similar instances, target on your back, etc. And the number four, and most applicable for the point of this video, okay? In the event Bitcoin increases 100x in purchasing power in, rapid, uh, in a rapid period of time, are you and your family prepared in all aspects to manage that much wealth, okay? And that's the point of this video, okay? This fake ETF news from a single tweet on the organization completely unverified got a 10% bump in Bitcoin's price in US dollars. Okay. Okay. And we can look at other currencies like the Argentine peso. Okay. Like, like the Turkish show, like elsewhere in the world. Okay. And we can see massive 10%, 30%, 40% pumps week after week, month after month, continually indefinitely. And so my question, my question here, number four is, are you prepared for when that begins, okay? Because everyone simultaneously is gonna be trying to take the coins off exchanges. Everyone simultaneously is gonna be trying to learn about Bitcoin simultaneously. Everyone simultaneously at the same time is gonna be demanding my time, every other Bitcoiner's time, okay? Imagine all the Bitcoin educators suddenly have all their time sucked from high net worth individuals and corporations and other people that are trying to help them take self-custody or trying to help them get their multi-sig vault. And so my encouragement is, whether you want a multi-sig vault or not, I don't care, okay? Be nice if you do, but most important is get your keys in your own hands. Get your coins off exchanges, okay? Hot wallets, figure them out. Cold wallets, hardware wallets, figure them out, okay? If you want a multi-sig vault, figure it out on your own. If you want a multi-sig vault with collateral custody, like the Bitcoin advisor, figure it out, okay? Do it now. Whatever you're going to do, or whatever you think about you're going to possibly want you're going to do, figure it out now, okay? That is my encouragement, okay? And again... I know I love you all, but many of you don't have your keys. <laughs> many of you don't have your coins off exchanges yet. And so I encourage you to think about all the trade-offs of all the different possible avenues for you to take, okay? And I do think, I genuinely believe that a collaborative multi-sig vault with a personal consultant is a valid consideration for most as we look to diversify our storage of Bitcoin holdings. So, okay, link in the description, Bitcoin Advisor, Luke Bros. You can learn more about what we provide here, our services. You can learn more about why uh, we have unique market advantages, um, you can maximize your sessions with me. Free consulting session for the first one. You can dive in there. So you can learn more about the Bitcoin Advisor on that link or Collateral Custody in general. And then you can book a meeting with me there. I do my best to have as many free openings as possible here for folks. So if you wanted to have that conversation, if you want to be considering and waiting for that, if you want to be preparing for that day that we have these massive spikes upwards, I highly encourage you to check this out. So thanks for your time. And probably, hopefully, we'll continue to watch Bitcoin crab sideways for a while longer before we get these massive green candles, both for the sake of you stacking sats while they're cheap, but also for the sake of those that are stacking sats to get their custody down right. So don't trade, don't speculate, don't go leverage long, don't go leverage short, get coins in your own custody. And if you want to consider as a part of your custody plan, a multi-sig uh, vault, as well as a uh, estate plan, check out the link Bitcoin Advisor in the description. Thanks.